What is up guys? Welcome back for our week 5 battle of the GPC. This week we are taking on Paul aka Fallop and the Doofer Drapions. He's a pretty monstrous team. It's mostly physically offensive. Let's go over it really quickly. Uh, you guys will see it come up on your right side. It's made up of Thunderous Incarnate, Garchomp which is his Z eligible Mon, Azumarill, Decidueye, Porygon Z, Metagross, Drapion, Acelgore, and Mega Heracross. So right off the bat, I see, like I said before, that he has a lot of physical attackers. By the way, guys, before I start this up, I just want to give you a quick apology for not having a uh, an NPL Miners match up this week. Uh, it was resulted in a forfeit. My opponent decided to forfeit against me, so we are now three and one in the uh, NPL Miners. Just to keep you guys updated with that, and uh, also uh, about live comms. I'll, I'll cover that a little bit later, probably after the battle. I'll leave a timestamp in the description of the video to the battle if you guys don't want to watch the team builder, but let's go over the team that we brought this week. So first off, we have Megalopony, Luna. Um, as you can see, he doesn't have a lot of great Megalopony switch-ins. Like, a lot of his mons are uh, very offensive, but not too bulky. Like, Azumarill can be run bulky, so can Garchomp, so can Metagross, uh, so can Drapion if it wants to, and especially Mega Heracross. Uh, most of those can be run uh, bulky, but for the most part, if they want to break my team, they're going to have to run some kind of offense. So uh, Megalopony can do a lot of damage, even on bulky sets. Uh, frustration with max attack adamant, as you can see that we are, uh, can do a lot of damage to everything barring Metagross. So I think uh, Mega Heracross, even if it's max HP, takes upwards of 46%. So it's dead to two after Stealth Rocks. That's good. Uh, Ice Punch is there specifically for the Garchomp. For Thunderous, if I want to go for uh, an Ice type attack. Decidueye, even though Frustration hits it harder. Uh, I mean, and there's a Freeze chance as well. We have High Jump Kick, and Fake Out is there to chip away in case Azumarill gets up a Belly Drum for whatever reason, and I'm not able to knock it out. I can always Fake it out a couple of times and knock it out that way. Uh, so it's kind of just like a little insurance policy, a way to uh, to bring myself back into the game if anything crazy happens. Speaking of Azumarill, this is our check to Azumarill. We have L the Gorg. Uh, if you guys don't know this nickname, by the way, if you don't get it, uh, watch Death Note and you'll understand it's because of this ability, Frisk. But uh, this ability is going to be coming in very handy. Identify Scarfers, identify what kind of sets his mons are running. That's going to be extremely important. Uh, this is my switch into his Azumarill, like I said before. Cobra Berry, I'm running enough speed to beat a speed creeping Azumarill for my Florgis in case he runs that because plus six Aqua Jet doesn't knock out Florgis. Uh, so he'd have to be running more speed if he is a Belly Drum variant. And if he's not an offensive variant, then I can take his attacks relatively well, especially with the Cobra Berry. I'm going to be taking nothing. Will O Wisp is to burn the majority of his physical attackers. As you can see, Garchomp, Azumarill, Decidueye is normally run physical, Metagross, Drapion, and of course, uh, Mega Heracross. Uh, synthesis is there for longevity and fire blast is here the, I'm a minus but F nature This is on here because I don't want mega Heracross getting up a sub in front of me uh, This also hits Decidueye and hits Metagross, so I don't need the ghost move uh, It pretty much covers those Pokemon because they are also weak to fire. So this is pretty good uh, So this is the Igor guys set we're running next up. We have one of our two sweepers Raigeki the Thunder Therian. I fiddled a lot a lot with this set uh, by the way I, I changed this team like maybe an hour before I had the battle, and this was the final product. I was originally running Kabutops and Ditto on this team, so uh, this is the Thunderous set that I have, uh, that I ended up with. It's max special attack, modest. I'm running 274 speed, which is to be able to outspeed Mega Heracross if it's max speed. 112 HP, then I have Agility, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, and Dark Pulse. This is a great way of dealing with this team once everything is weakened. Once rocks are up and everything is coming in weakened, uh, I can pretty much knock everything out. I, if I get an agility up, I can outspeed a Selgor and kill it. If, it, if rocks are up, uh, Drapion takes about 60% from Thunderbolt, so I only need like 30% off on that before rocks, uh, before a rock switch in. Hidden Power Ice is to be able to hit the Garchomp. Uh, I did consider not running HP Ice, uh, just because uh, Thunderous, his Thunderous takes more from Thunderbolt, and Hidden Power Ice is really only there for the Garchomp, because as you can see, we're also running Dark Pulse with Dark EMZ. That's enough to hit the Decidueye and knock it out, um, even if it's max special defense, and it's also enough to knock out the Metagross from full, barring an AV set, so... I don't see him bringing AV against me, it doesn't make much sense, because the only thing on my team that really hits super hard on the special side is Thunderous, so uh, this uh, this definitely, uh, his Metagross is probably going to be physically offensive, uh, physically defensive, excuse me, basically, so uh, it will not be able to take a Black Hole Eclipse uh, once I have my agility up, I'm pretty much knocking everything out if everything is weakened, so Mega Heracross is the only real thing standing in my way, I can only do... Uh, about 50% to him, 
so I need that thing weakened. Uh, I considered running HP Flying instead of HP Ice, uh, again, because I only really hit the Garchomp with HP Ice, and HP Flying would allow me to hit the Mega Heracross and sweep through his team once Garchomp was weakened, and Hidden Power Flying does a lot to Garchomp anyway, because we are Max Special Attack Modest, and it is Stab, so... Yeah, um, I fiddled around a lot with the set. I ultimately decided that having HP Ice would be a good idea just in case it did come down to Garchomp versus Thunderous. Uh, also, this speed, what it allows me to do is once I'm at plus two, I also outspeed any potential Scarfer on his team, including a Scarfed Thunderous Incarnate. So this is pretty much the ideal speed for me this week. Next up, we have Drizzy, the uh, Zygarde, my other... Uh, Endgame Sweeper. I'm running Thousand Arrows and Earthquake because I do still have to hit the Thunderous. Uh, alter alternatively, like, again, this is another situation where I considered not running Thousand Arrows and just running Earth Earthquake. Uh, because, really, Thousand Arrows is only there to hit the Thunderous. Uh, but it can be good for other things. Like, uh, he can't really switch around on Thousand Arrows. Uh, and he can't avoid my, uh, my Earthquake. Uh, with Thunderous Eye if I have that Thousand Arrows as well, so Crunch is there of course for the Decidueye, for the Metagross even though Ground hits it harder because it's Stab, uh, but it's specifically for the Decidueye, otherwise I wouldn't be able to hit it, and uh, this is my primary win condition on a lot of my games, so I expect him to bring Decidueye to be able to stop this, so that's, uh, I'm running Yachi Berry as well. I really, really heavily considered running Roselli Berry for his Azumarill instead, so that I could set up and when he would switch into it in case it was bulky, uh, that I'd be able to get up another Dragon Dance and then knock him out with an Earthquake. But ultimately I decided uh, his Thunderous Eye is definitely going to have HP Ice. His Porygon Z, if it comes, is going to have Ice Beam. His uh, Metagross is going to have Ice Punch on it if it comes. So I really, um, I really, really am ba banking on Yachi Berry to be able to, to pull out this game for me. So that's why I decided to run that. Uh, next up, we have Chris Pratt, the Aerodactyl, coming for the first time. I'm bringing a Focus Sash variant. We did bring this in our game against Drew. It didn't do much. Uh, we're running Stealth Rocks, Ice Fang, Wing Attack, Earthquake. This is my way to revenge his Mega Heracross. It's, as soon as it's at 80%, Wing Attack is, is destroying it. Uh, Ice Fang uh, is there for the Thunderous Incarnate as well as the Garchomp. And Earthquake is able to hit the Metagross and the Drapion. So essentially, I can hit five members really hard with this set. And it's also my Stealth Rock Setter, and it's pretty reliable. With the speed I invested, I'm outspeeding Max Speed Garchomp, as well as a Thunderous Incarnate, which is built to speed creep my Thunderous Therian. So it would hit 332 or 333, I'm not 100% sure. I hit 334, which allows me to run Adamant on this set. His team doesn't have that much speed. Uh, his, high, his fastest Mon is Thunderous Incarnate, so that really hinders him, and that's why I really like having Aerodactyl as well uh, as Megalopony. Uh, because against some teams it can do a lot of work, so I'm really happy to have this, and uh, I think this is pr pretty much the ideal set that I want to bring. I did consider bringing Defog, uh, Roost as an option, but I ultimately decided having three attacks would be the better route. I'd be able to hit a lot of things on his team. And then finally we have Lucky and Bad, the Jirachi. This is a... Uh this is a set that's completely walled by quite a few things on his team. Icy Wind is there to catch a potential Scarfed Garchomp. Uh, as you can see, I'm running 319 speed. This is enough for his Drapion so that I can U-turn out on it and not have to worry too much about Pursuit. Like, yes, I'll still get hit pretty hard with Pursuit, but I am max HP, so I'll be able to take it. Uh, Thunder Wave can paralyze everything on his team, barring Garchomp and Thunderous Eye, which don't want to come in on Icy Wind. And Psychic is there specifically, again, for the Mega Heracross. I need to weaken that thing if I want to win with these two. So, any and all ways that I can do that, I will. Uh, and Jirachi is one of the best, of course, with Stab, super effective, Psychic, hitting on the special side where Mega Heracross is a little bit weaker. So, this is going to be the set. Thunder Wave helps out a little bit with, uh, with Thunderous. If I, if I get everything paralyzed, I won't need to get up an agility, essentially. So, uh, that's, that's the game plan. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the team. So, I think that covers everything. I think we just hop into the battle now. See you guys in a sec. Alright guys, here we are, and as you can see, Paul brought the Drapion, which I did expect. Uh, he brought the Thunderous Incarnate, the Garchomp, the Metagross, another thing I did expect, his Azumarill, that was for sure coming, as well as his Mega Heracross. Uh, Mega Heracross was kind of like a 50-50, but I, I did more so think it would come. Um, the Thunderous Incarnate and the Garchomp were kind of like a toss-up. Like I said in the Team Builder, if you guys didn't see that, then I'll, I'll say it now. I did expect Decidueye to come specifically for my Zygarde. Uh, because otherwise it really runs through him, but it turns out he has another check on his team, which you guys will see later. So, let's get right into this. I'm going to put this on normal, and we'll play it. 
He leads off with Drapion. I lead off with my dedicated lead being uh, my Aerodactyl. I decide, let's just get up rocks. I could have hit this thing with an Earthquake and gotten up rocks on the, on the following turn, which might have been a better play because, as you'll see here, he decides to go for Toxic Spikes, and I would have still conserved my Sash had I uh, just gone for the Earthquake because, as you'll see in a second, Earthquake is a 2-hit KO, and then he wouldn't have been able to hit me. He could have switched out into his Thunderous, but his Thunderous doesn't really want to take an Ice Fang, and I can just get up rocks on that. I have my Focus Sash intact so it's all good as you can see I do two hit KO the Drapion pretty easily it did 56% the first time 50 the second he brings in his Azumarill and I'm terrified of this so I'm gonna get out of here and I'm gonna go into Gore guys Paul is smart he pulls a nice double out into his Garchomp but as you can see I identified his Azumarill as an expert belt set so this is really good information that means he's probably not belly drum and that also means that he's not choice banded so I don't have to worry about Azumarill as much this game meaning that Gore guys is sort of expendable now he's gonna go into his Garchomp he needs to get up rocks this game if he wants to beat me. He sees the Thunderous, he sees the Aerodactyl. The Aerodactyl can keep coming in for free right now. His Toxic Spikes aren't hitting three of my members at this point, being Jirachi, Thunderous T, and Aerodactyl. So he needs these rocks up, but as a result, he gets his Garchomp burned, which is amazing for me. So now I'm just going to throw out a synthesis because I want to see what his response is to this. He goes out into Thunderous. He does let it take rock damage, which is great. Uh, like I said before, Gorgeist a little bit more expendable this game. So I'm just going to go for a Will-O-Wisp on this Thunderous. And I'm actually negative Spadef. So he's going to go for Hidden Power Ice and it's going to do a tremendous amount. And I'm not going to risk switching out. Uh, being that I'm Colberberry, I will not be able to live the following Thunderbolt. Uh, it's going to do way too much to me and it's going to knock me out. But now this allows me to bring in my Megalopony. And this right here, guys, is a turning point in the game. I'm poisoned. I don't have to worry about getting parried. I can just throw off an attack, and I'm thinking, okay, well, if his Garchomp is his response to, to Lopany, I have no reason not to throw out an Ice Punch right here. Perfectly safe. I'm just going to go for it. He brings in his Metagross as his response. I'm like, okay, well, bad turn, I guess, but I'm not going to take any supplemental damage just from Poison. Wrong. He has Rocky Helmet. But as you can see... We get a freeze on his Metagross, and this is pretty huge because this thing completely deals with my team outside of uh, outside of Zygarde in a way. Uh, it can pretty much hit everything else. It's got coverage for everything, but I freeze it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play a little game of my opponent is a very smart player, and I'm going to take advantage of that. So I'm going to go into Jirachi. I'm going to get my leftovers for the turn, and I'm thinking, okay, looking at Paul's team, if I get up a Calm Mind right now, his Garchomp is burned. I don't have Calm Mind, guys. You know I don't have Calm Mind. But I'm in his head, and I'm thinking, okay, he sees Jirachi. It comes in on Metagross. It has leftovers. It can be a Calm Mind variant. And if it is, then he's in trouble if I get up a Calm Mind and he tries to stay in here. Because his Garchomp is burned. I'm faster than both his Azumarill and his Heracross. And his Thunderous is a special attacker. So he's forced to switch right here. He can't stay in and try to thaw because if he never thaws and I go up to plus three, plus three, this game is over. It's done. Unless he crits me somewhere. So he's going to get out of here. He's going to go straight out into his Garchomp. I'm going to go for a Psychic, making it seem like I was predicting something else to come in. Uh, or that he would just stay frozen and I could just throw out Psychics. But I don't have any coverage for his Metagross, guys. I just scared him out. And he doesn't know yet that I don't have any coverage. Now I'm going to go for an Icy Wind. He goes for Earthquake. I go for Icy Wind. And it actually turns out he's Yachi Berry. And I was like, oh no, I didn't kill him. Burn's not going to kill him. He's going to get off another Earthquake on me. That sucks. And then I remembered like two seconds later. I'm like, wait a minute. I just dropped his speed and he's not Scarfed. So actually, I haven't seen yet if he's Scarfed. But I'm pretty convinced that if he is Scarfed, he's running uh, enough speed to outspeed my Megalopony. Or my Zygarde at plus one. So I'm thinking my Jirachi is probably still faster regardless. But now I've seen Yachi Berry, right? So, I mean, that, that completely wipes, wipes off the idea of Scarf off the table. So I'm just going to go for a Psychic. I'm going to get back another round of Leftovers, which works out great for me. And now Paul is going to make uh, probably his only play. But it's still questionable because this is the only thing... This, this Mega Heracross in front of me is the only thing standing in my way from sweeping with either Thunderous or Zygarde. So, I don't know if I agree with it completely. Anyway, I'm just going to throw out a Psychic. Of course, I am faster than his Mega Heracross, and it turns out that I 
I don't live his pin missile, unfortunately, from this range. It's very close. Uh, he, if he gets a low roll on one of them, then or a couple of them, then I could live from there. But otherwise, I'm going down. If I had a little more defense investment, maybe I would have been able to take it. But now I bring an Aerodactyl. And his hair... I don't even care anymore if he switches out. His Heracross is sitting at 16% when it comes back in. It's in range of everything. Everything on my team. It doesn't even matter if I click uh, high jump kick with, with Megalopony. It's going to drop. So I'm just going to throw out a wing attack. And I do pick up the knockout on uh, Mega Heracross. Aerodactyl, two kills already, man. First game. Ditto got, like, what, four kills last game against Turbo? And now Aerodactyl gets two kills this game. Amazing. He's going to go out into Azumarill. And now I don't really want to switch out of, uh, out of Aerodactyl into something else and take an Aqua Jet. So I'm just going to stay in. He's going to go for the Aqua Jet. He's going to knock me out. But I did identify that this thing is Expert Belt. So what I'm going to do, I'm going, I'm going to go out into Thunderous. Now, had I thought this through a little bit more, I would have seen that, okay, he doesn't have a response for Zygarde. Maybe Azumarill is his response for Zygarde. And I should just go for... I love his nickname, by the way. I just noticed it. <laughs> That's that's some Zazo right there, but had I noticed that he was um, uh, That this was probably his only response for Zygarde I probably would have clicked agility right here because as you guys are gonna see this aqua jet is gonna do nothing It does 25% from adamant huge power and probably not adamant But huge power Azumarill aqua jet does nothing to my thunderous if I got up a an agility right here I won the game the game was over it was it was finished there was no coming back for Paul. But I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. I'm just going to knock out this Azumarill. I can't risk it attacking me. But uh, now he's going to go out into Metagross. And guys, right here. Right here. I just want to uh, to level with you guys for a second. I felt really bad about this freeze. Okay? So, I could have clicked Black Hole Eclipse right here. I have the uh, Dark EMZ and I have Dark Pulse. And it would have just knocked his Metagross out. He would have gone into his Thunderous. Knocked me out with a, a Hidden Power Ice. I would have revenged him with Lopany. 2-0, game's over, it's fine. But because I'm a nice guy, <laughs> I decide I'm gonna go for agility, and if he thaws, I lose one point in differential, but I still win this game because, like I said earlier, my Zygarde is Yachi Berry. So I'm gonna go for the agility, and what do you know, his Metagross thaws <laughs> and goes for an ice punch and knocks me out. So. Uh, he was confused about this turn. I told him after that I was like, okay, well, I feel bad. If anything, I'm going to give Paul a chance to redeem some differential. Uh, that's actually what was going through my head on this turn. I was like, I don't need to agility right here. I can win 2-0 very easily if I just click Black Hole Eclipse. But I'm going to give him a chance uh, to, to just try to come back in this game. So I know that my only way to win at this point, because he has 80% health and my Zygarde is not set up yet... I don't want to go into Zygarde because plus 1,000 arrows actually doesn't take him out. I know he's Rocky Helmet, so he doesn't have Shooka Berry, but I need to get him in range of 1,000 arrows because I don't want him switching around between his uh, his Thunderous and his Metagross on my uh, Zygarde because it's going to be poisoned. So, And if he gets a crit Ice Punch, then I have a chance to start dying very quickly. Uh, so instead, I'm going to go out into Megalopony, and I'm just going to go for a Frustration. One, it covers the switch into... Uh, his Thunderous, and two, it puts his Metagross in range of plus 1,000 arrows, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, it dies from 66. Max HP, max defense. That's what I calc for. Uh, he's gonna go for an Ice Punch. Uh, he's not gonna knock me out, but Poison is gonna do the job. But now I can go into Zygarde, uh, and I can just set up a Dragon Dance. I take 6% from Rocks. I get Poison. That doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go for the, uh, the Dragon Dance. He's gonna go for the Ice Punch. Luckily, he does not crit us. He goes for the Ice Punch. I gave him a chance to get back some Differential, okay? The, the Freeze was out of my control, but I gave him back some Differential, so... Uh, I didn't want to get crit right there. That would have been terrible. Uh, but I would have lived anyway. Even if he crit me, I would still be at about, like, 12%. Uh, and uh, his Thunderous comes in. I go for the Thousand Arrows. Knock this thing out. And that is going to be the end of the game. Also, guys, uh, he did switch up moves with his Thunderous earlier on my uh, Gorgeist. Had he not done that and just clicked HP Ice again, I might have thought that he was Scarfed. And uh, thought twice about this endgame. If I didn't know his item on Thunderous... I would not have made that play. 100% of the time, I would have gone for the um, the Black Hole Eclipse on his Metagross. Because then there was a chance that I could lose the game. But because I had seen that he wasn't Scarfed, I just went for, uh, for the sweep with Zygarde. Because I knew I could because I had the Yachi Berry. So, uh, don't ever do that. Just a little uh, tip 
for you guys that are playing in league format do not um waste differential like that because it can be quite important but i i love i thought about the pros and cons i was like okay well i give him back one differential but i also end up at four and one uh nobody else is going to be at four and one after me uh unless somebody that's three and one currently wins uh, but so you guys should go check out the other game to see what happens, see if anybody's ahead of us. But uh, if nobody else that was 3-1 and one prior to this week uh, wins their game, uh, and Paul was one of them, the only other player, I believe, was... Uh, who was it? It was Josh, and he was taking on Zazo. So either way, uh, either Josh went up to 4-1 and one, uh, and tied with me, uh, and Zazo went down to 4-1 because he was 4-0 before the week, or Zazo won, went up to 5-0, which I didn't care about because I'm probably not going to pass him anyway, and Josh would fall to 3-2. So that really didn't really matter to me. I hadn't seen their game yet. I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I can just go for this endgame, give him back a, a chance to get some differential back, uh, a chance to let his Metagross thaw, and uh, that's why I went for that endgame. But uh, realistically, don't ever do that, guys, especially if you're in a tough spot and you're not sure if you're going to make playoffs. My run's going pretty well. Uh, I've got some pretty tough games uh, coming up, especially Ethan next week. Uh, he's going to be a powerhouse, and uh, he, he's got a scary team, let me tell you. The uh, Firewater Grass Core of Tapu Fini, Charizard X, and uh, his grass type is who at this point? Actually, I think, yeah, it's Shaman. So Shaman, Charizard X, and uh, Tapu Fini is pretty scary. Couple that with a Weavile, a Ductrio, uh, and a Celesteela. Like, his team is actually pretty mad. Uh, really, really strong team, and I'm, I'm really scared to face it. But uh, I have some plans for it. We'll see if, uh, if we can come through. Uh, but that was the game, guys. We do win. We go up to a, uh, well, a 4-1 on one record. Uh, but I'm going to tell you our differential in a second. We're at plus 6, so not bad at all. 4-1 uh, record, it's basic, essentially just gives me a, a plus 2 on every win that I've gotten, so uh, really not bad. And uh, I'll spoil it for you guys now, even if you haven't seen the rest of the games, because we are at the end of the video, and if you're still listening, thank you. But we are second in the Grand Conference right now, so we're doing really, really well. Uh, I did say a couple of weeks ago that I have a tendency in the GPC of going 2-1, and 2-1, and 2-1, so... Uh, if the trend continues, I'm probably going to lose to Ethan. Uh, and honestly, I wouldn't be too angry about that because I did hack Ethan pretty hard out of a playoff spot last season. Uh, and I didn't really want to do that. I didn't know him too well at the time. But had I uh, known that, I probably would have clicked reversal with my Dugtrio on his, uh, on his uh, Terrakion instead of clicking Earthquake. So, because I knew he was Shook a Berry. But if you guys didn't check out that game, definitely go back on my channel and watch that game. It was pretty intense. I believe there's a Doug Trio on the thumbnail, if I'm not mistaken, so it's pretty easy to identify. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out all the other coaches in the description, as well as Paul, of course, our opponent. Make sure, make sure to go check out his side and his reaction to the freeze, because that was pretty big in the game. It forced him to take damage on his Mega Heracross. And uh, also, make sure to check out the GPC channel, the Twitter, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!